Ben Spoolin. Behind me on my workbench, I have my Subaru's old engine. I'm gonna explain why the engine failed and why I had to replace it, and also basically the drawbacks of Subaru's flat four system, at least on an OEM setup. I believe this engine has somewhere around 85k. It burnt a lot of oil. I bought the car, it ran fine. In the cold, it ran fine. It ran like 10 to 10.5 to 1 in boost when it was cold outside but if it was above like 50 degrees and you went to you went to boost it was running 8 to 1 all the time in boost so it would it would even start getting choppy and misfiring in boost which i am extremely confident led to the rings not sealing the way they should cylinder wash down and also the piston skirts being worn down as you'll see in a second so let's get right into it because there are some really interesting things we can learn about Subaru Ringland failures the Subaru boxer system in general like I said so I'm gonna start from the best piston which happens to be this one back here and we're gonna go from the best piston in this engine to the worst so Starting out first things first, we can see that a lot of this black material has been worn away. I can't feel a difference by hand, but whatever material this is has been worn away. This is pretty much a surefire sign of cylinder washdown because this is just a lack of lubrication over and over and over again being worn away. An interesting thing we can see about Subaru, which is extremely important to not only the washdown problem, but also what appears to me to be the ringland problem and the knocking problem, is that this piston is going sideways like this, and we have our fuel injectors up here squirting fuel into the combustion chamber, and with gravity and the force of the the pressure in the fuel system squirting that fuel in the air to fuel mixture is drawn to the bottom of the combustion chamber which actually would be this on this side so that that air to fuel is drawn to the bottom of the combustion chamber and it sits in the bottom so when you are running too rich it literally just pulls up on the bottom of the cylinder wall instead of on top of the piston as you'd see in like an inline engine which is much healthier because not only does it prevent wa the worst washdown which Subaru is more prone to just because the way the fuel system works and sprays and with gravity but as you'll see later it also is what I believe to be the reason that these cars destroy ringlands the way they do. Because we have the air to fuel mixture spraying down at the bottom and when that big cluster is pre-ignited instead of pushing down right here in the middle which can take a lot of cylinder pressure I imagine it's just smacking this bottom over and over and over again. And this piston is the only piston that has perfectly clean ringlands. The knock didn't get to this one, but the washdown did. You can see this is the bottom of the piston because it's the most worn down, and this is the top, which is visual proof that more fuel is sitting on the bottom of the combustion chamber because this is worn down more than this side because this is on the top of the combustion chamber versus the bottom of the combustion chamber. We can get the next piston. This one has some actual scoring on the skirt. Again, cylinder washdown wear. And on the top side, not much scoring. And 
not so bad of cylinder washdown wear. So what's really interesting is that you can see actually the beginning of Subaru Ringland failure. We have one crack right there and moving down the piston we have another crack right here. So this piston was on its way out and this could be in your engine just waiting. And right here is the bottom of the piston. Where are the two cracks? The two cracks are right where this finger is and this thumb is. This proves my theory that Subaru's Ringland failure is a direct cause because of the boxer engine. It's not just a tuning thing. Maybe they need to retard the timing more. It is a direct cause because of Subaru's fuel system spraying the maximum amount of fuel being sucked in with gravity to the bottom of the piston. So the same area of the piston when it's knocking keeps taking all that load and that's why we see these cracks here just waiting. Just every every time the piston's getting hit, just waiting to actually destroy that ringland. Moving on to the third piston. Again, we see some scoring and some cylinder washdown. Some scoring and some cylinder washdown. One interesting thing on this piston is that there's some crud built up, which actually I think helped protect this from cylinder washdown because this is the bottom of the piston, but it didn't um, it didn't remove as much material as the top side. And this is the only one with this weird gunk on it. So I think that maybe helped seal it. This looks to me like it's just carbon fuel buildup. That's not supposed to be there. Basically the washdown being converted into this kind of caramelized material if you will and again we see on the bottom of the piston not one crack but two cracks there's the second one and these are all pr pretty similarly distanced from one to the other so we have another ringland you can see right there it's prone to breaking it is very prone to breaking from here to here eventually that's going to let loose this last piston is the reason why there's a dead misfire I was looking at this piston and I saw this again two cracks two cracks again one and two right there and I noticed that one of the cracks was expanding so you can see that one actually just got a tiny bit wider and then I moved it again and it got even wider and I was like wow I think my car actually had the Subaru Ringland failure so I got this Ringland out with a screwdriver so this cylinder had like 40 psi compression and that's because just like we saw on those other pistons there were two cracks and for whatever reason this cylinder was knocking the worst and eventually those cracks were stressed enough to actually break part of the piston off so this is why basically I put a forged block in my car or forged pistons and forged connecting rods because even if you have a brand new STI crank brand new STI block over time, it doesn't just happen in one instant, one pull. Even though the symptoms finally pre the symptoms finally present themselves when it finally lets go, but these two cylinders over here are proof that the Subaru Ringland failure actually is built up over time, and it could be in your engine. It's probably in your engine if your car knocks it all. Mine may have had it much worse because of the cylinder washdown, I don't know, but again, I can't say it enough. The Subaru Boxer engine 
has ringland failure because of the design of the fuel system and their propensity to knocking. With all that fuel on the bottom, it's not knocking on the center of the piston. It is knocking on the bottom of the piston. As we can see, eventually those ringlands get stressed and they start to deteriorate, they start to crack. Only one piston out of this engine was not on its way to ringland failure. It would be, it would be really interesting to see how much longer these two pistons last. If I, could, if I had a sub, donor Subaru and I could put these pistons in. It was running on 20 PSI most of the time, not the stock 15. So that definitely had something to do with it. Hotter air charges, worse knock, more prone to knocking. Definitely accelerated the process. But we see this even on stock cars. So it's a knocking thing. If your car is knocking, if you have a Subaru and it's knocking, the ring lands on the stock pistons are, I'd say, going to go out eventually. So to avoid this problem, you want a good tune, stronger pistons, and speed density if you can. Because the, the top mount intercooler, it really should be called the hot mount intercooler. But you can see here that I have an intake air temperature sensor that is wired up to the Link G4 Plus ECU that I usually have in the car. So the ECU knows exactly the charge temperature coming in and it can retard the time accordingly. Whereas on the top mount cars, you can install that, but almost all of them run off Subaru's math. My car doesn't even look at the math anymore, it just looks there because that's the temperature that matters. Like if you've been sitting in traffic or whatever, the car doesn't know how ineffective the intercooler is. So speed density is very good. Looking down here, took the precautions and bought an IAG stage 2 block instead of another OEM block, which I'm very glad I did now that I've taken the old engine apart. The engine's been in there for close to a year now, and I just had the old short block lying around. I finally got, I finally took it apart like a week ago. So it's better pistons, a good tune, speed density, and avoid situations where the engine is knocking. That's obvious. But really any situation you're boosting, if it's really, really hot out, if, you've, if you're heat soaking your intercooler in traffic or something, just be careful. Don't boost the car at low RPM and have fun with it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope your Subaru lasts longer than mine did. I only got nine months of fun before it blew up and now I've had so much time spent, so much time and money spent on this thing to get to the point where it is. And it's still not even pro-tuned yet because it's been so unsmooth I haven't wanted to get on the dyno. Peace.